Bitcoin, you could think of it as a city in cyberspace, 256 blocks across, 256 blocks long, 256 blocks high. There'll never be more than 21 million. The, yeah, sorry, 276 blocks is the right number. The cube root of 21 million is about 276. So if you imagine a city in cyberspace, 276 blocks on a cube, that is the immutable, uh, immutable supply of that asset. And that's all there's ever going to be for a thousand years, maybe for 10,000 years. Yeah. And so one day, all 8 billion people in the world want to live there. In the rapidly evolving world of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin continues to make headlines. As of now, Bitcoin's market capitalization remains robust, signaling enduring investor confidence despite the economic tremors shaking global markets. At the forefront of advocating for Bitcoin's potential is Michael Saylor, the executive chairman of MicroStrategy. His unique perspective blends his expertise in aeronautics science and technology with a deep dive into the crypto landscape, marking him as a pivotal voice in this sector. Saylor's vision of Bitcoin is not merely as a digital asset, but as the cornerstone of a new financial architecture in a digital realm. He famously describes Bitcoin as a building in cyberspace intended to anchor a vast portion of the global financial system. This analogy highlights not just Bitcoin's potential to reshape financial interactions, but also its inherent attributes that distinguish it from traditional asset classes. For instance, Bitcoin's hard cap on its total supply minus 21 million coins ensures that, unlike fiat currencies, it is protected from inflation and devaluation, which are pervasive issues in today's economic environment. Moreover, Saylor emphasizes the accessibility and immutability of Bitcoin. It transcends geographical boundaries and economic barriers, making it an immutable, immortal, scarce, desirable property accessible via a simple mobile phone connection. This aspect of Bitcoin is particularly compelling as it democratizes financial opportunities, allowing individuals worldwide to participate in a global economy from which they might have otherwise been excluded. Michael Saylor's advocacy and educational efforts aim to illuminate these characteristics of Bitcoin, advocating for a broader understanding and adoption of this cryptocurrency. By positioning Bitcoin as a fundamental component of a burgeoning digital financial system, Saylor not only highlights its potential advantages over other asset classes, but also aligns it with a future where digital transactions may dominate. As we continue to witness the expansion of digital finance, the perspectives and analogies provided by thought leaders like Saylor will be crucial in shaping public perception and policy towards cryptocurrencies. I think the best way to think about money is uh, there are three parts of money. There's a medium of exchange, a unit of account, and a store of value. Currencies are legal tender defined by a nation state. So the dollar is a currency in the US and the peso is a currency in Argentina and the real is a currency in Brazil. Currencies make good mediums of exchanges and they will always be good mediums of exchanges wherever there's an effective government. Um, units of account tend to be the strongest currencies that, that people look to and coordinate with. So the US dollar is a unit of account in Argentina even though the medium exchange is the peso. So money trifurcates and the, the, the Chinese currency CNY or the euro, these are all units of account as well. So the strongest currencies oftentimes become units of account because they're built into prices mm -hmm. and they're built into accounting systems, you know, or they coexist with the local currency. Um, store of value is is that aspect of money that is got the longest half-life. So if you think about um, what people use as store of value, they don't use the peso in Argentina. They might use the dollar over 10 years, but over a hundred years, say in Western Europe or the US, people would use property like real estate, or they would use trophy assets like a soccer team or a football club or they would use art, or they would use equity, like they would own Apple stock, or they would use the S&P index, they would mm -hmm. own a diversified portfolio. So money itself trifurcates, there's 150 or 120 currencies that are mediums exchange, there's maybe half a dozen units of account that really people care about. And then stores of value, there's the 20th century equity portfolios and property. Bitcoin is the strongest store of value in the 21st century. My first advice is, is don't, 
don't invest your money, invest your time. Spend 100 hours. First, spend 10 hours. Read the Bitcoin standard. Um, go take a course. Go look at some of the videos. Start to study it. And try to get to 100 hours. Everybody in the world works 100 hours every two or three weeks their entire life to make money. If you're going to work 40,000 hours in the course of your life to make money, you might as well work 100 hours to keep it. Right. So make the investment. As the global economic landscape grapples with fluctuating markets and inflation concerns, Bitcoin's role and identity continue to spark debate. Michael Saylor, a prominent figure in the cryptocurrency world, is steering this conversation towards viewing Bitcoin as digital property rather than a mere currency. In his latest interview, Saylor critiques the common labeling of Bitcoin as a currency, which he argues is a misclassification that overlooks its primary value as a robust tool for capital preservation. Saylor's stance is that Bitcoin, with its finite supply, represents a more stable store of value, much like real estate or fine art, which are not typically liquidated to cover everyday expenses. He points to the practical use of Bitcoin as akin to owning beachfront property in an exclusive area, limited in supply, and likely to appreciate over time due to the scarcity. In a recent CNBC interview, Saylor emphasized that the real monetary potential lies not in Bitcoin's use as a medium of exchange, which he claims encompasses a market of around $1 trillion, but as a store of value, a market he estimates to be worth $100 trillion. Expanding on his theory, Saylor explains the concept of money in three facets, medium of exchange, unit of account, and store of value. He argues that while traditional currencies like the US dollar serve effectively as mediums of exchange and units of account, their ability to act as long-term stores of value is compromised by inflationary pressures. For example, he illustrates that the dollar's purchasing power significantly diminishes over decades, pointing out that property and other hard assets have historically proven to be more resilient as stores of value. Saylor's analogy extends to Bitcoin, which he compares to prime real estate that appreciates over time due to its inherent scarcity. He explains that just as there's a finite amount of beachfront property, the cap supply of Bitcoin makes it an exceptional candidate for preserving economic energy far better than fiat currencies or even gold. His analysis of the half-life of money, how quickly a currency loses half of its purchasing power, underscores Bitcoin's advantage in an era of rampant monetary expansion. Through these discussions, Saylor not only refines the narrative surrounding Bitcoin, but also highlights its potential to transform financial strategies in a digital age. By advocating for Bitcoin as the premier store of value of the 21st century, Saylor challenges traditional and modern investors alike to rethink where and how they secure their wealth long term. As we look to the future, Michael Saylor envisions a significant migration of economic activities from physical cities to the digital realm of cyberspace. In this evolving landscape, Bitcoin, despite being a relatively young asset, just 14 years old, has already positioned itself as a central hub for digital transactions and investments. Saylor projects that as more economic functions transfer to cyberspace, Bitcoin will capture a substantial portion of these activities, further solidifying its role as a dominant digital asset. Saylor's advocacy for a paradigm shift in how Bitcoin is perceived is timely and strategic. He suggests viewing Bitcoin not just as a currency, but as a billion-dollar building in cyberspace. This metaphor is designed to elevate Bitcoin's status to that of a monumental structure in the digital world, akin to a prized piece of real estate in the physical world. This analogy is crucial as it underscores the enduring value and stability of Bitcoin, comparing it to assets that historically appreciate over time, such as high-value real estate and prestigious artworks. Moreover, Saylor argues that this shift in perception from seeing Bitcoin as a currency and recognizing it as digital property, could significantly alter how governments and financial institutions engage with it. By framing Bitcoin as a stable store of value rather than a fluctuating medium of exchange, it becomes a more attractive investment. This repositioning could mitigate concerns from regulators and policymakers who are apprehensive about Bitcoin's volatility and its potential use in everyday transactions. This strategic reimagining also addresses a common critique that Bitcoin is not practical for minor transactions like buying a cup of coffee. By advocating for Bitcoin's role as a preserver of wealth, akin to an investment in a rare art piece, Saylor deflects this criticism and highlights its utility for long-term financial security. 